Welcome to Columbus. We just flew here. Um, there was a tornado warning this morning here. So it was a little bumpy on the way in, but we made it. We are, I, I'm, I apologize in advance for all the people that live in uh, Ohio. I do not like this state. I like you, but this state, I do not like it. It just, the air is always gray. It just looks gray outside. Like every time I'm here, the sidewalks are all falling apart. The buildings are hideous. Like if you look at Columbus from a distance, you're like, wow, they must have tried to make that city look terrible. But the Airbnb is nice. Um, we're about to eat some Lupia. Filipino food. Some of it's Filipino, some of it's not. It's confusing. We're going to eat some Asian fusion cuisine. Then we're going to go to the training hall. I got to do my snatch. It's at 127 today. Holy shit. So I got to snatch 127. And I back squatted yesterday. I did four sets of two. I haven't back squatted in, since I like pulled out of the Arnold. And I did four sets of two pause squat with no belt and no knee sleeves at like 185. I'm fucking so sore. And then I slept three hours last night. And now we're here. So like, I didn't recover. I didn't recover. <laughs> and we're gonna have to go do this anyways. I should be a little bit lighter since I cut my hair off. So we'll see what happens. But we're just gonna let the travel s evaporate out of our systems. We're gonna eat some food and I will see you guys in the car. All right, we're here. Can you get in filming the car? Because it was cold and we couldn't think. Um, this is all, this is what the training hall looks like right now. So I'm just doing a couple air squats, sipping on a Celsius, mapping out the nearest casino, just doing normal dozer shit. And uh, I'm just gonna snatch. We're gonna try to get up there pretty quick and get the fuck out of here, because I, I do not like the vibe of this at all right now. We might try to come in uh, either really early or really late tomorrow to avoid this mess. I know everyone's like excited to be here. Most of these people probably flew in today and they're like, let's go train, let's go see people. But I don't have any friends. So for me, it's just training. I don't get to see any friends. But I'm gonna finish the Celsius. We're gonna try to get a platform. Uh, it might just be one angle for the lifts because I don't know how much moving around Nico can do in this mess, but we'll see what happens. Day 10 of snatching one kilo for every 1,000 follower until I can't do it anymore. Today we have 127 kilos because we have 127,000 followers. Scenery's a little different, but let's go. very hectic we just kind of got out of there quick because we were done and we wanted to get out of the way but that's literally all we had to do today um we had to fly here snatch 127 and now we're good um what else happened ronnie coleman sat right in front of me on the plane that was pretty sweet zach gets here tomorrow tomorrow is thursday all we have to do tomorrow is pick him up train and that's it that's all we gotta do tomorrow it's gonna be pretty boring up until uh saturday. saturday honestly friday we literally have nothing to do so i don't know what the fuck's gonna go on there but um that's it for today i will see you guys tomorrow morning <laughs> everyone congratulate zach on his first flight in three years i thought i was gonna die was it bumpy on the way to detroit uh, no, on the way to Columbus it was. Really? Yeah. 
It was a smaller plane. Dude, the flight from Dallas to here was so fucking bumpy. Dallas. Ronnie Coleman was sitting right in front of me. What the fuck? <laughs> You're <laughs> yeah. lying. No, I'm not. I swear to God, I have a picture. Dude, what the fuck? Why aren't you both that? We're at the training hall. Um, not as busy as it was yesterday, but I think we're about to start working in over here. But it's day 11 of snatching one kilo for every 1,000 followers every day until I can't do it anymore. And we're at 128, so we gotta snatch 128. Enjoy my hatless lifting for the first time in decades. Dude, I feel way worse than yesterday. Comment if you think the moon landing was real. One twenty. Let's go, come on. Nice. Yeah. Welcome to the Dozer Mobile. It's the longest car in Columbus right now. This is what they call a Columbus Hummer limo. Um, so that's pretty much it for today. I think we're going to eat some food and just watch Talladega Nights over and over and over again until we get um, depressed and then we'll go to bed. But that was, what day is it today? Thursday. That was Thursday. Um, you're probably around minute six or seven in this video. So just keep trucking along. We're gonna do the same thing. And um, comment what happened to F Malaysian flight 370. We're just gonna light these up, I want. Let's drop so many conspiracies that we get this demonetized. That's our goal. And if it, if it happens, I will give away the answers to all of these conspiracies because <laughs> old dozer has them i'll see you guys tomorrow all right we uh good morning it's what day is it friday day three, yeah. day three friday uh we took a little detour um to the suburbs of columbus beautiful beautiful place um but we're gonna do some snatches and we have some support today we have a guest, and it's this guy. <laughs> Happy Big Friday, fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. We got like an hour to just throw around some weights and do whatever, so we're gonna do that. I gotta snatch 129 at least, but might go a little heavier today, so we'll see. I'm gonna get warm, oh, I am warm. I'm always warm, but I'm gonna get a little more warm because it's fucking cold in here. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. So it's Big Friday, it's my favorite day of training week. I've fucking been buzzing and training with this guy for, for ages. Um, a lot of people that follow me follow him and you know he's a very smart bloke when it comes to understanding Olympic way of thing. I love what he's doing with the sport, so I'm excited to, to train alongside him today and have a bit of a throw down. Oh, fucking too much, <laughs> yeah. baby. Double angle. It's day 12, I've got to snatch one kilo for every 1,000 followers I have, and we're at 129. What's the, what's the main things that you're thinking about like when you're setting up to the bar? Um, oh. Yeah, just to catch it on there as well. For me, um, it's finding a torso angle that I can maintain throughout the pool. Mm -hmm. So like if I set up and I can feel my hips being too low. So I'll like, 
when I set up, I'll feel a torso angle and I'll push into the ground a little bit and just see if my hips feel like they want to shoot up. Yeah. Then when I find a torso angle when it's not that, I'll just lock that in. Yeah. I think torso angle in the snatch is like super overlooked. Yeah. If you can just maintain a torso angle, then you'll probably be all right. Yeah. If you start shooting the hips up though, that's where all the misses come from. Yeah, I noticed like um, a good video you did uh, the other day was just talking about like where the weight is in the foot in the start. And I yeah. think like that and finding balance at the start again is something I see. Yeah. So many beginners when they're setting up have no like feel for where the weight is in the foot when they start. And that's something that I'm super big on when, when I'm getting set in the, in the start position. Probably similar to what you're saying about how you feel for a good torso angle. Yeah. Like I'm feeling for where the weight is in my foot before I actually like lock in. So that again, when I'm starting, I'm not gonna fold or yeah. go out of shape in the first pull. Yeah, I feel like people think about like specific things a lot. Mm -hmm. And if you just pick like, so if you pick two things and do them really well, chances are everything in between those two things will line up. Yeah. So like people are thinking about like what their knees need to be doing, like how they should stay over the bar. Like if you get good foot pressure and a locked in torso angle, all that stuff's gonna work itself out. Yeah. Well, but if you don't then you have to think about that specific shit yeah well the snatch is happening so quickly as well i always say like two two things for a bloke is a lot to think about <laughs> yeah <laughs> beautiful structure of a program or like what to put into their program and yeah think, oh, i need to do fucking hang below knee hang above knee snatch off blocks fucking yeah all these variations whereas in actual fact there's nothing better than just snatching if you yeah. want to get good at snatch Snatch will uh, teach you everything you need to know. Snatch, pull, squats. What do you want next? I'll probably go 90, 100, 110, 20. Cool. Beautiful. Can where I, do you think of your, uh, where do you put your foot pressure? Do you like spread it evenly or focus on a spot? I'm kind of like here, like yeah. just, just above like my second strap. So a little bit more forward in the foot than I think. Same. You're yeah. not a big heels guy? Nah. I hate that cue, dude. No, because else like the hips are gonna be flying up at the start. Yeah. Like, I always think like in anything, and people make this mistake a lot, putting too much weight in the heels. If you're gonna hit extension, there's gonna be this movement forward yeah. in the lift. If you're gonna hit extension, and too much weight in the heels is gonna yeah. exacerbate that through the middle phase. So I don't know why that cue is so overused, the heels yeah. thing, but like nothing athletic has ever happened off the heels. No. And this is the most athletic thing you can do. Yeah. But we have quite like different sitting positions. Like your chest is a little bit further through than mine. Yeah. Mine's like a little bit more upright, but yeah. I've, because of my ankle mobility, naturally my knees are sitting further forward yeah. in the bottom position. Yeah. You got really good thoracic mobility too. But mm. like you can really open up here. I can't. I think that's just playing too much Xbox when I was younger. Nice. Yeah. Best ever is 222 front and 262 back. And what are your best lifts? Uh, 160, 200. Damn. A night four. That's pretty efficient. When I did the 200 clean and jerk, I, was, I, did, I missed a 215 front squat the week before, yeah. and I missed a 225 deadlift. So. Well, yeah, you missed a 225 I, deadlift? I missed a 225 deadlift when I clean and jerk 200. <laughs> that's wild yeah. but this is the thing like we're like so conditioned to pull like like a lifter yeah whereas if i like just folded my form and probably pull with around yeah. back i'd be sound but yeah just not got it in me that's still fucking crazy yeah i can pull because your strength numbers are pretty good i saw like you squat 270 didn't you uh my best ever is 280 yeah and i deadlifted 285 that's but, like, but this is the thing as a lifter like my numbers are, my strength numbers are shite compared to my actual lifts so. yeah mine's opposite yeah. 
That was always like my downfall though as a as a lifter. Like just I'd never when I when I first started weightlifting, my first coach never put a massive emphasis on strength work. Mm -hmm. So I just never squatted half as much as I should, pulled half as much as yeah. I should. And they caught up to me when I was later. But then not only that, I held my body weight down yeah. far too much when I was younger. Yeah. Like as a youth lifter, I was hanging on to 77 for dear life, like dieting down. You see that food. a lot. Yeah in, yeah, in your years when you're developing your most amount of strength. Whereas yeah. if I had my time again, that would probably be one of the key things that I'd do differently. Yeah, that's why I tell like people within their first like three or four years of lifting, like if you start off like a little more scrawny, like do not hang on to any weight class. Don't even worry about weight class. Yeah. Just like eat, because you're gonna be hungry all the time. Just yeah. eat as much as you can and just train. Obviously, don't blow it out and get huge, but yeah. like body weight should not be a limiting factor at all. But as a kid, you think like the youth world championships are like the most important thing in the world. You do. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and then you're like, no one gives a fuck about you. And what's crazy is your hormones are going so crazy at that time that if you just go up and wait, you're going to be way better. I know. But you just think, oh, I got to stay here so I don't. Did I already do this? No. Nah. Yeah, I love it. Nice. Through the middle, you keep it like so nice. Really? Like, so close here when it's passing your knees. Is there anything in particular like through the middle, like what's going through your head like so through the transition? This started clicking. When I was training with Pure, or I was at Cal Strength and Pyros came for a session, and that was like the thing I was terrible at was like clearing the knees. And he would literally say like, "Clear the road," over and over. He's like, "The bar has to go like this." Yeah. He's like, "You got to get your knees out of the way." So I would literally just think of what the bar was about to do, just make sure I kept my chest up and just get everything out of the way. Yeah. And if you have that backwards momentum, you can stay over the bar really well. Yeah. But. I don't know. I think that's one of those things that takes a lot of uh, a lot of time, and yeah. experience, and just repetition. I think like naturally, like the mistake the beginners make is they'll try and be too aggressive in the first phase off the floor, and yeah. then it, that's when they kind of get lost in this middle phase. Right? Yeah. I always think about I'm not trying to accelerate until the bar comes to this point anyway. Yeah. Because it's changing speed that's like more important than the initial speed. Of yeah. The floor. Speed off the floor doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Like literally is irrelevant. If anything, it can be a detriment because if you pull too fast and you can't accelerate, then the bar is only going to be able to decelerate. Mm -hmm. and if the bar is decelerating going into the hip, you're going to miss. Yeah. The timing is going to be fucked. Yeah, agreed. He, he also gave a weird cue for extension. He said, uh, imagine there's a beach ball and he's like, when you extend, just like bounce the beach ball straight in the air. Yeah. That was like his cue for extension, which is funny because, you know, Demos, you've seen him lift. Just like, yeah, his head start flying back. Whips. I don't know. Those that's are like, cues. That's a good good point that you make there, though, about the about extension. Because I always see like for for when people think about extending really well, they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna just keep doing this." Yeah. But like, the further your shoulders go back, you don't gain any further height. Yeah. Whereas like, I always think about the extension just coming purely through the legs here. Yeah. And the most mute that I can keep the upper body, the better. Like. Yeah. Yeah. All the action should be below the waist. Yeah. <laughs> All the action below the waist. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know if you do something similar, but for me, like when I'm starting to get above 90%, I stop really thinking too much about technical stuff. For and sure. More about the like, execution than anything. Yeah. I feel like the main issue when people think they need to change stuff when they hit a certain mark. And I feel like the one day they don't do that, that's when they PR. Mm. So like when you get to 90%, if you're gonna think about anything, just think about the last lift you did and try to recreate that instead of thinking about the next one and what you have to do to make that. Mm. If you can just stay doing the same thing, you're good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. See, missing that's way easier than making 35 and then making yeah. 40. <laughs> yeah, true. You got feel for it now. Yeah. 
<laughs> Gotta rest the shoulders. I'm like the biggest bitch on jumps though. Like, really? Taking big jumps is like so scary for me. Dude, that, uh, that Zach guy that's competing tomorrow, one of my guys, his, his snatch was 140 at the start of the month. And he had block snatch, he hit 140, and he just went straight to 150. Like 10 kilos more than he's ever wow. done. Just fearless. Oh, oh day. Fucking out rocked me that one, dude. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> so it's day 453. My name's Dylan Cooper, and I'm gonna snatch one kilo for every thousand followers that I have. <laughs> so I'm here with Dylan Cooper, America's finest bit of beef. Um, he's gonna walk me through his key points for setup position for the snatch. All right, Take me so from the top, like as if I'm a complete noob. All right, so step up to the bar. Good, keep your feet hip width. Okay, and when you stare width, down, yeah. you should be, the barbell should be right on top of the end of the shoelaces or that bottom strap. Okay. So get too close, you're never gonna be able to get to a good starting position there. Yeah. So you wanna give yourself some space, have some space between your shin and the bar. So back up, bar right on top of the first strap. Yeah. Then from there, just squat down. Good, hands on the bar. So the main things I want to focus on here is first, we want the shoulders right on top of the bar. So if we, we don't want too far, that's a little far over, right there. Mm -hmm. So it should be a straight line from the bar, kind of to the shoulder joint. If we're a little further forward than that, that's fine. But somewhere it's gonna depend on your limb lengths. The way we get tension from here, get your eyes and point them straight forward. Maybe find something on the wall to stare at and just lock in on that. Next, you're gonna find your foot pressure. And the way I like to do this is get some tension. And we do that by pushing the quads into the ground. So now that you have that tension, that's where we're gonna start from. So go ahead and relax. But we don't wanna to get to that start position and stay loaded up the whole time. Because if we're there extra tense for five seconds and we pull, we're gonna be fucking tired. Yeah. So grab the bar again. We can start with those hips high, just like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit the hips down and lift the chest. Then from there, push the quads, get the tension, then go. Yeah. That's how we load up for a snatch. Yeah, nice. I like that. Cool. My turn. Yeah. Cool. So, key things to me, like you, before I'd even think about starting to like, approach the bar for setup, I always think, tell people to go in like their jumping stance, mm -hmm. where they're gonna produce most vertical force when they're setting up. So. It's always nice to kind of feel for that because I think it kind of reminds people to yep. feel the weight in the same place in their foot like they would do when they're jumping. I like that. Yeah, just like you when they're addressing the bar, thinking over the bar over the midfoot, like commonly see when people set up like way too far back from it. Yeah. And then they're kind of reaching with those knees further forward yeah. in the setup, causing the weight to drift forward. So when we're taking the grip on the bar, obviously I just like you would start with a high hip position. Uh, when I'm taking the grip on the bar. So if you take your snatch grip on the bar here. Now, what I focus on for, for a setup is I'm thinking like when you lock into the bar, so shoot the hips down into this position, I'm looking for knees and arms in line at this point. Now, what that'll probably cause you to do is actually stick your bum a little bit higher, which is fine, but the bar must be touching the shins and locking into that position. So that's my like rule here, knees and arms in line in this setup when we're starting the lift to initiate. Now, another thing that I'll think about here is actually bringing the knees in very slightly. So I'd come a little bit narrow with the feet here in the setup and bringing the feet so the knees are directly above the toes here and having a little bit more space here because I think for me, what I want is bum a little bit higher here. I want you to be able to set your shoulders back and down and then have the weight here on the quads in the start. And that's kind of like the key things I'm thinking about alongside obviously the eyes being up to start the lift. So it's slightly different, I think, to, to you in terms of that position, but everyone's gonna be different in terms of their uh, limb lengths, etc. But that knees and arms for me actually gets the shins a little bit more vertical than a lot of lifters would do at that start position. So again, mm -hmm. helps me keep it nice and straight in that first phase. Actually, I haven't heard that. Like kind that. of off the floor. Yeah. I think it's just a good thing to have for people as like a simple, simple cue, knees and arms in line. Great, I'm gonna get my hips in the, in the right yeah. height position. Just something like definitive that you can do for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, let's talk about like common um, common mistakes. So let's talk about that bit from the floor, like when you're talking through like someone yanking the bar off the yeah. floor. So let's just dive a little bit more more into that, like with the mistakes that you kind of see with the people you work with. So the main thing off the floor, we get this perfect starting position, and then immediately just here. What strip I like strip of booty. Yeah, stripper butt. <laughs> what I like to tell people is when you imagine you're doing a leg press. Yeah. So the reason I use that is because when you're doing a leg press, your torso is locked in. Mm -hmm. You're resting on a pad, you're just pushing your legs. I like that. If you can take that same movement, same thought process, and apply it to the start, just imagine there's a pad on your back. Here, we're just doing a leg press. Yeah, I haven't heard of that, but yeah. I like that too. That's, that's been the one that's help people like get that light bulb yeah. in the start position. Something that I quite like as well from a setup, if you get into your setup position for your snatch as well, like, and this happens for like clean or, or for snatch, obviously we're setting the shoulder blades back and down. So we're feeling the tension kind of here underneath the armpit. I'll get my athletes to just keep the arms relaxed and almost shake them there. And then imagine as though like I'm grabbing your t-shirt and pulling you up from here when you initiate the lift. Mm -hmm. So the lift is getting led with the chest because if the chest leads then the legs are going to be able to do the work if the hips lead in the first phase that makes it very difficult to get the legs involved in the second phase of the lift so it's kind of from that position when we're still holding the right start it's here the first bit uh, so imagine yeah. like as though i'm being pulled here by the scruff of my chest mm -hmm. um way up here yeah <laughs> it definitely makes it easier <laughs> so are we talking like high hang low hang talk us through both like what's a high hang for you because like another thing that i see like Hip snatch, I, yeah. don't, I don't really coach that or program yeah. that. Um, so yeah, t talk me through everything hang related for, for you. Okay, so the high hang, the reason I like the high hang is because I wanna get really good at the kind of dip and drive movement because if we're high hang or hip snatch, I like those. We get to here and then we drive. And the jerk we get to here and then we drive. So it's the same exact movement. If we can kind of make that universal, like it applies to the clean as well. It's power position in the clean, snatch, jerk. Yeah. And we can make that universal, like consistency with our training, it's gonna be a lot better. So. Yeah, I really like that. I think I saw a video that you did specifically yeah. on that about that power position yeah. or position being exactly the same across all lifts. Yeah. It, it makes sense. So like if you take your arms out of the equation, power position is always here. Yeah. No matter what the lift is. So I think the high hang does a really good job of drilling that and also, deletes a lot of movement that happens down here so you can focus on your arm mechanics a lot more. I think dropping the elbows too soon will create a disconnect from you and the bar and then you'll have to almost find the bar again when you're mm -hmm. pulling under. But if we can keep those elbows a little bit higher than the bar, it's not gonna look like that when you watch it back but the thought alone of keeping yeah. just that feel cue. Well, there's a couple of things that like, I'm just going through my head at that, yeah. that point as well. I'm like definitely elbows above the hands yes. at this point or backs of the hands point into the to the wall yeah. in front of me. Yeah. And that's something that I'd actually like show people because mm -hmm. when I was first taught to lift, my coach didn't tell me anything about like what's happening here with the arms because they were like, well, your arms don't do anything. Yeah. But I was like, it helps the athlete if they understand what the movement needs to be from here. And I'm like big on elbows high and hands yeah. to this point. And then it's almost like we're pressing like, yeah into this position so the bar's obviously staying close. Yeah. Because the minute that hand gets higher, then you're creating distance. Yeah, so. and I, I like to say the uh, the bar travels opposite of the knuckles. So like if your knuckles are straight down, the bar's gonna go straight up. If we get here, then you're gonna pull back. Yeah. So if you can keep those knuckles down, you're gonna maintain connection a lot easier. You're actually gonna be able to follow through that extension and keep connection by using the upper back because a lot of people just get really hippy, smack the bar and drop under. Yeah. So the high hang does a really good job of hitting all those points. Um, yeah. What I like Perfect. to do for the normal hang, which I do like knee high just above the knee, mm -hmm. is I almost like to treat it like I'm at a seminar teaching positions and like how to move from the positions. So if we're gonna do a hang snatch, I think the worst thing to do is to just drop straight down into the hang. Mm -hmm. We should get to the power position first and then we feel that foot pressure, we keep it there, and we just shift back and let the bar fall straight down. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it lines your foot pressure up appropriately, and you can feel it the whole time, and you're able to reverse that movement and just go straight back to the power position. If we have the bar, we're standing up, and we just drop straight into the hang, then we have to do something different on the way up. Yeah. And that can create kind of like this cyclical weird movement rather than just repeating everything we know. Because when the bar is in our hands, we should always be in position. If yeah. we get pulled out of position, then 
you're gonna get used to that. Yeah, and that's cool. never gonna work out. A couple of bits that I could add to that, just from from my side as well, from Hang. Like I think a lot of what you just said there, I'd really agree with. But one thing that that I find super helpful as well when people are doing any hang work is to make sure that they're thinking about picking the bar up as that same way they would do in their snatching. Mm -hmm. More than anything, because I see so often when people do hang, they pick the bar oh, yeah. up like this and then all of a sudden all the weight's in the upper body here. Whereas like, when I'm picking the bar up from the floor, if I'm just thinking about pushing with my legs, when I stand to my set position for the hang, the bar's like completely hanging in the straps and I can let the lower body yeah. do the work from here. Common mistakes that I kind of see happen when people are moving into the hang position is again, that, that chest dropping here. And then this distance being created with, between you and the bar without having to pull the bar in. So I'm thinking about when I'm going to the hang position, I'm always letting the bar lead so that when I'm hanging here, my shoulders are directly above the bar. A lot of people I think when they do hang, think being over the bar is this. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're directly above it and you're keeping your arms relaxed, that bar should be in contact with the body here. And as long as we can keep it touching when we change direction at the knee, that's what's allowing the legs to do the work in the extension. So that's kind of something that I'm always feeling for when I'm getting someone to find the right position. I'm like, when you lower the bar down, if you're letting the arms completely hang, should still be feeling like your fingertips are touching the legs and that knee is above the strap so that we're in that mm -hmm. position to produce force too. I think the most impressive thing today is that you snatched that after holding it for so long. <laughs> <laughs> Two mics. Two mic, baby. I think the biggest misconception with the jerk is where our foot pressure is because this is like the most similar to a jumping motion that we do because we load and then we unload. Mm -hmm. uh, with the snatch, we're loading the whole time. With the clean, we're loading the whole time. But here, we actually load up and unload. So you want to think of this as a jump. If you were to go try to dunk a basketball, you would not do this and then try to jump from there. You'd get three inches off the ground. Mm. You want to feel athletic in the foot. That way, when we dip, we can have activity in our quads, we can have activity in our glutes. And you'll notice that if you get here and then you shift back, the glutes just mm. turn off. I think the biggest reason why that, where that comes from with people like heavily loading into the heels before they dip is because sometimes when you're coming out of a super heavy clean and it's hard, the weight can sometimes shift a little bit into the toes here. But when people say, I'll go put the weight back in the heels, what we really want to see is just actually bring the weight back into the neutral position mm -hmm. rather than back in the heels. Like, whereas when I was first taught, like my coach would say like, oh, I weight in the heels, but like, is that 70% in the weight in the heels? Is yeah. that 60% of the weight in the heels? Whereas in actual fact, it's probably like 55, 45, just very yeah. slightly back. Cause ultimately we just want that dip to be straight. Yeah. yeah. Another thing I like to think about is that pressure point in the foot for me, I'm literally balls of the feet when I dip and drive. Yeah. Like I, I load up through the front of the foot pretty heavily and sometimes my heels will even budge off the ground. Are you turning your toes at all in this position? Yeah. Or? yeah. I like to turn the toes out a little bit and I like to kind of shove the knees out over the toes. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can get more glute activation that way. I can get the back half working a little bit more. If we're just straight forward like this and we dip, it's all quads. Yeah, I anything. think it changes person to person as well, For depending sure. on the range of motion in the ankle. And I think that's definitely something that people should play with before they even pick up the bar, where, where it feels comfortable for you. Because sometimes I see with athletes that maybe turn the toes out a little bit too much or the feet are too wide, you'll see during the driving phase, the knees collapse mm -hmm. and then all the tension's lost through the midline. Yeah, I think a good way to pick what your feet are supposed to do is where they naturally go to in the catch of the clean, because mm -hmm. that's gonna be your most natural. Like if you're moving your feet fast and you're not thinking about what they're doing and they yeah. land a certain way, that's probably the way it's gonna benefit you the most. Yeah, I like so I'd keep that consistent with the jerk. What was the next thing? Oh yeah, the... Uh, I wanna, yeah, t talk to me about the front rack, like where you are like in your setup. So the front rack, I like to be very active in the front rack. A lot of coaches will tell you to be like passive through the hands and make sure that, you, I've had coaches tell me to relax my hands yeah, in the front show rack. Me, pick it up. So, in the front rack, I'll ha I've heard coaches say relax the hands, so here. Mm -hmm. But the moment I do this, it is so hard to like be active and hold on to tension. I like to drive the elbows up and then push the shoulders forward. Yeah, that I like way that. I can have like this really nice platform and I'm active. Because yeah. I'll see a lot of guys, they'll get in the front rack and it'll just be crushing the On throw. the collarbone. Yeah. And I also see as well like the bar and the fingertips here. Yeah. Like I always say like, 
bar needs to be below the knuckle line yep. in the hand here yep. and keeping it close. Because that way when you're putting the bar up overhead, if you just press it overhead from it, you, the hand doesn't need to move and the wrist position doesn't need yep. to move. It gets to stay completely locked in that spot. Yeah. Nice. You'll see a lot of really good jerkers go from like here, but they've been doing that since they were seven years old. And you don't really <laughs> want to be playing a game of fucking catch with a <laughs> heavy no, weight don't. above your head. You want to hold it. Yeah. So we're here and when I dip, I like to think of the bar staying directly on top of that pressure point in my foot. So I'm almost like my body is a coil. Yeah. I'm here. It's right on top. We're not shifting forward or back. Mm -hmm. If you start way back on the heels, you're going to naturally bias that pressure point. And you're going to shift forward. If we just stay there the whole time and keep everything on one plane. Then we're going to be way more consistent, way more comfortable, way more explosive. Mm -hmm. But if there's any sort of horizontal displacement in the dip, and that would be caused by you thinking you need your pressure somewhere else in the foot, like back here, yeah. We're dumping everything forward. Now we have to fight against that, either drive back or miss it forward. So if you've got an athlete then that, that is drifting forward, like what's your like go to to help help them? The one thing that's helped is I'll just tell them to start a little bit further forward. Yeah. Um just gonna make it over here. Yeah. So if you're dipping and you're just dumping everything forward, that can only be happening for one reason. Well two, but most of the time that's one. You're just starting with everything too far back. Yeah. So if you take and shift forward there, yeah. feel the quads a little bit staying in there, yeah. then just load that up. Just go straight down. You're never going to dump forward when you do yeah. that. Sometimes I'll actually get athletes as well to pause at the bottom of the dip to feel mm -hmm. for where that weight is and yeah. then drive from that dead position. And I'll even do this in my warm up sometimes when I'm doing jerks myself. I'll actually go down, pause, and then drive from that dead position just to get a feel for that yeah. point where I'm trying to change direction in the dip. So talk to me now like about receiving position. I'll go into my receive position. You just want to walk me through yeah. like what you should what I should what we should be looking for here. All right. So the main things I'm looking for, we need to be actively punching up into the bar. If we expect the bar just to land on our joints, it's going to cause a lot of pain and you're going to miss a lot of jerk. So really push the shoulders up into that bar and squeeze those triceps. I like that, yeah. The I shoulders. sometimes think about like almost holding the seat in tiles up like yeah. in this position. Yeah, exactly. You want the shoulders to stay directly on top of the hips the whole time. Mm -hmm. If we have, so lean forward a little bit, the bar is either going to shift forward or you're going to have to drive it back, which is going to open that shoulder joint and create more instability. The more open a joint is, the less stable it is. Mm -hmm. So if we can sit vertically like this, we just have to punch straight up. Yeah. Keeps it really simple. Yeah. And in terms of like back leg position, like what, what's your thoughts thoughts here on the back leg? Cause I'm like big for like trying to keep from the midline that I start on here uh -huh. and where I split, I'm trying to keep like a line running here through the knee, through the hip, through the shoulder into my overhead. So yeah. that the majority of the support's being taken here. Yeah. What's your thoughts? I like to think 50-50, just 50% 50 of the weight should be in each leg. Um, and I also like to think of keeping the same amount of bend in both legs, which is a cue I know I thought of myself when I was falling asleep one night and I was like, let me use that in my next workout. And it was, they were some of the best jerks I've ever done. If you can think of sending the hips straight down and keeping an even, like the same amount of bend in both legs, yeah. so like the deg degree, or the angle in both legs is about the same. Yeah. It really simplifies things. And if you keep the hips right under the shoulders, it's almost impossible to be thrown off here. Like I'm as stable as I can get. If we start shifting forward, we have more bend in this leg than this leg. Yeah. Most of the weight's in this leg yeah. and vice versa. So if we keep it even, it's hard to mess up. Yeah. If you just do a jerk towards the camera, I just wanna, I wanna talk to you about something that, that I see, like just, just facing the camera, just straight down the barrel. If you just do a jerk, like, one of the things that I see some lifters doing, right, is thinking about doing this with their front foot and then like this with their back foot. And yeah. I see a lot of Americans teaching this. Like, yeah. Is that something you should subscribe to? No. 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 Nor, nor do I. And I see a lot of people talking about it. Because the big thing for me, like when, when you're in a split position here or the jerk, the tension's being created by keeping this knee out. Mm -hmm. on the outside edge of the foot so it's tracking here and a lot of people say that oh this is going to create more tension but I always feel like if the knees collapse inside the foot line the glutes are going to switch off so yeah that's exactly what happened when you turn my foot in yeah so I think if you ever have to force yourself into a certain position it's not really going to benefit you yeah like your natural movement is your natural movement that's what you've been doing your whole life so if it's comfortable 
chances are you're going to perform the best under those circumstances. If you're trying to emulate something that you see someone do or someone's told you to do and it's really uncomfortable, it's probably not going to work. Weightlifting is a pretty natural feeling thing once you've done it long enough. Yeah. If you're forcing unnatural movements, then you're not really going to see a lot of benefit from that. Sick, bro. That was so good. Thank yeah, you. That was awesome, dude. All right, it's day 13 of snatching one kilo for every 1,000 followers. We're at 130K today, so we gotta snatch 130 kilos. I may or may not have pushed it a little too hard yesterday and attempted some heavier things, but if there's a day I can't snatch 130, I don't want to be breathing. go back, chill for a little bit, then Zach's gonna weigh in and Zach's gonna compete. So I was gonna bring you guys in the back room, but probably not, so Zach can focus. So you'll be watching from the front. Yeah, you guys are gonna see it from the front. Um, Cause I know how overwhelming it can be to have a camera in the back. But yeah, we're gonna do that. And then you're gonna see Zach compete. Then we're gonna go have a big dinner. Um, Nico's gonna fly a drone over the table the whole time. It's gonna be fucking sick. You guys are gonna love it. But we'll, we'll film a little bit when we get back to the house. I need to get some fucking... I've already had like 400 milligrams of caffeine today and I'm tired. So, something about the Arnold and all these people it just sucks the life out of you. I, I don't know why. But that's what caffeine's for. And that's what we're gonna do. And I'm either gonna have a heart attack or I'm gonna feel really good today. Those are the only two options. Now it's so hungry. <laughs> All right, that's it. Zach just fucking balled out. Um, his snatches were insane. Uh, this was the, so we did those two local meets leading up to this one, but he didn't cut for either of those. Zach's hallucinating. Um, he fucking crushed snatches. He put 50 on the bar, which is insane. I did not expect that. But the one thing I made sure I wanted to do is let him take exactly what he wants to take. I don't ever want to be the coach that will tell you like, no, that's stupid, we're not taking that. Like if you want something, you have a higher likelihood of hitting that weight than something you don't want. So I let him take everything. In hindsight, we should, should have gone 87, but he wanted 90. He wanted to do something crazy today. And he was in phenomenal shape. PR just, lifetime PR snatch on your second attempt. Um, clean 90 twice in two minutes, but like I said, he's not used to the weight cut. He cut weight for the first time for this meet, and his scale was misreading, so he overcut like a pound and a half. And if you've cut weight, you know that's a lot. So the one thing that gets shot when you cut weight is your legs, and that was the issue today. But still, with that, he opened at his PR clean and jerk from three months ago. 
he opened at his PR snatch from three months ago. He increased his national meet total by 38 kilos. And he's just getting started. I'm honestly happy he has a meet where he knows he could have done a little bit more because that dude feeds off that better than anybody. He fucking crushed it. I know he wanted a little bit more, but he's going to get way more than just that at his next meet. So that's it for the video. That's been the Arnold. Um, tell Zach good job in the comments. And I will see you guys. I don't even know when the fuck this is coming out. And one last thing. Use all the codes. Barbell Apparel. Gorilla Mind. Onyx straps. That's it. All right. One more thing. Get the technique manual if you want to lift like Zach. Bye.